Um, but the recent fires have been very difficult to control. Those windy conditions have led to extreme fire behavior, making suppression very challenging as the fires shift directions rapidly and unpredictably. Two large fires ignited on Wednesday afternoon, the Cow Canyon fire, which is about 13 miles southwest of Ellensburg, and the Williams Lake fire, 11 miles south of Cheney. We also had a large fire in the Vantage Highway that has been burning near the town of Vantage since Monday, with level three evacuations have been ordered uh, for dozens of residents. And then yesterday, there was a troubling incident that rapidly developed near the town of Lind, where a grass fire uh, burned some 2,000 acres and the Adams County Sheriff Department ordered evacuations for the entire town. We lost several structures in that fire. Um, the Adams County Sheriff's Office reported last night that the Lind fire has been contained and all evacuation orders have been lifted. So great work happened yesterday and through the night to bring some uh, security to that community and allow them to come back home. We are fortunate DNR has been very well equipped uh, to be able to deploy resources at each of these fires. We had significant amount of air resources on a number of them. And we know that our skilled firefighters have been working hard many uh, through the night. As we move now into the weekend, we're already seeing significant progress on these fires and we're hopeful that we'll continue to see improvements. Obviously, our thoughts are with the residents that have been directly affected by these fires, whether they were evacuated or they have tragically lost a home. And our gratitude is with the brave firefighters and the first responders who've been working day and night to keep our state safe. One of the great things that we're blessed with is the leadership from our agency and from the legislature in the investment of House Bill 1168. We've already been able to see with the increased firefighters as well as the increased resources in the air, the ability to get on these fires even more quickly and to contain them. Now, although fire activity has remained relatively low for this time of year, uh, we cannot forget 2020. While we had a light season in the spring and early summer of 2020, we all tragically remember the Labor Day firestorm where just in 72 hours, uh, we lost significant amount of structures and a little boy's life and enormous amount of fires. So we've been blessed to have a light fire season, but we need to be very aware that our fire season is now upon us. And with the hotter, drier conditions and windy conditions, fires can erupt very quickly. This is the prime part of the season for severe fire potential. As we've seen just in the past few days, it is going to likely get worse before it gets better. And we are urging everyone to be responsible and follow their best practices while recreating and hunting and burning yard debris. Don't be the spark in conditions like these. One might be all it takes. Thank you for your time and stay safe, everyone. I'm gonna now turn it over to Russ for our operations briefing. Thank you, Commissioner. And I'll uh, touch on some of the same points uh, that you just heard from the Commissioner of Public Lands and, and hopefully provide a little more detail on these incidents. So for several weeks, uh, we've been briefing on uh, expecting a rapid transition in this fire season. So while that early wet spring did give us a delayed start to fire season, it also promoted a lot of growth of fine fuels, uh, especially out in the Columbia Basin. With our most recent heat dome, uh, those fuels have, have come on line with a vengeance. So we're seeing very active fire behavior, very rapid fire growth when we do get the wind events in Eastern Washington. Um, the other thing, we, we start every day in the Northwest with an incident commander call. And uh, two days ago, there was one incident commander and now we're up to about seven and uh, we're adding, adding new incidents to the board every day, uh, which is starting to create uh, you, you know some competition for resources. Uh, but we are doing well staffing the fires and it, it is a rapidly evolving situation right now in Washington and the Northwest. So I'm gonna start with the Vantage Highway fire. We've been working that fire for about four days now. It had a local type three team on it. It now has transitioned to a Northwest uh, type two team, team 12, led by Jeff Dimke. They've made great progress on the Vantage Highway fire. It's sitting around 30,000 acres. Uh, very good structure protection partnership with the uh, Washington State Fire Marshal and, and our fire service partners. That fire is sitting at about 30,000 acres. Um, 
it is showing some movement now to the west. It had been pushing hard towards the east, toward the Columbia River, and they've kind of picked up that part of the fire. But uh, there are there is a wind farm threatened on the west side of the fire as it's starting to grow to the west, and that's going to get some priority today for ground resources and air attack both. Uh, Northwest Team 12 is also managing the Cal Canyon fire that's 11 miles northeast of Natchez. They're showing 0% con containment. They do have an anchor point established. There are numerous residents threatened there. Uh, Team 12 is getting together a good plan for that fire and starting to take some really coordinated action. Uh, they are, um, that also will get a priority for air attack today. Uh, you heard about the Williams Lake fire 11 miles southeast of Cheney. Uh, it is sitting at 1500 acres, about 30% contained. We had high concerns for that fire yesterday afternoon that it was going to escalate uh, more and, and go to a type two team that did not happen uh, due to some great uh, firefighting there uh, with DNR, our agency partners, again, uh, strong help from the fire service. Uh, they think they're going to be able to hold that fire at a type three incident. They're pretty optimistic uh, that that's going to progress towards containment, which is uh, a, a really, really nice effort on that fire. Uh, also, uh, Commissioner mentioned the Lynn fire. That fire did get some air support from DNR, uh, great local firefighting. It is uh, not yet contained, but it, it's looking really good this morning. So good chance to uh, uh, prevent any further impacts to the community and the, and the agricultural resources out there with the Lind fire. I, I will note that on uh, Lind and Williams Lake, both uh, we lost fire service engines, uh, no personnel hurt, but a couple engines were burned over in those fires. Uh, really kind of due to that heavy growth I was talking about in the fine fuels, some of the engines are getting stuck out in the rangeland. So, uh, briefing folks on that, and we're going to be doing some some lean-in prevention work there to prevent any future uh, safety problems. Finally, in, in Washington, to round it up, I'm going to mention uh, the Riparia fire. This was a new emerging incident yesterday in Whitman County down on the Snake River. That fire has rapidly grown uh, to 6,000 acres overnight. It did get a state mobilization, so there are uh, strike teams in, in route right now to help the, the local fire service partners there. Uh, we're evaluating it for air attack this morning, uh, likely get a bunch of DNR air resources out there. And, and that fire is gonna be a challenging fire down on the breaks of the Snake River and some really steep complex terrain. So that kind of rounds up uh, the Washington uh, picture. I will note, I always like to mention there's a lot of initial attack going on that's getting high success and that's because of the resources we do have available so we're catching uh, literally dozens of fires uh, in that small to moderate size range that that typically don't make the news uh, also wanted to note note in the pnw picture here uh, down in oregon there are several teams mobilized uh, two type two teams one near mosier uh, and the other the other type two team is down in the Cascades on the Umpqua and Willamette National Forest and also a national team, Pacific Northwest Team 2, is mobilizing near the town of Oak Ridge. Uh, DNR and the Washington Fire Service uh, have personnel that staff all those teams. And uh, so we have Washington folks helping out uh, across the geographic area. And with that, I will uh, end report. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Uh, next, I'm going to turn the mic over to Matt Dia, uh, wildland fire meteorologist. Matt? Hey, morning, everyone. Yeah, like Thomas said, Matthew Deer, um, wildland fire meteorologist for the Washington DNR. Um, the fires this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, occurred under a very, very dry, very, very windy uh, weather conditions. It was uh, in the week leading up to these fires, we had an, a very long duration heat wave. Um, Seattle, even on the west side, set their record for six straight 90 plus degree days. So we had our fuels absolutely primed. And when that ridge broke down, uh, we got multiple days of wind. 
uh, working with our partners at the National Weather Service across the state, as well as the Northwest Coordination Center, we were able to message this event very, very effectively. Um, in my opinion, we had red flag warnings Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for very, very low relative humidity uh, and very high winds uh, in the areas that the fires did end up developing. So. As we move into the weekend, we are going to see a bit of relief from the winds. Um, we're still expecting very dry conditions, especially across the east side with relative humidities bottoming out um, around 10 to 15%, uh, much like we saw Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. However, we're not gonna have those strong winds. There's really no pressure gradient um, driving any winds for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, if anything, we could get a couple of gusts down the Okanagan Valley um, through uh, from Canada, we could get some smoke with that. However, um, I'm not anticipating a large scale wind event like we saw uh, early in this week. Now, as we move, as we move into the weekend, uh, we are going to get pretty hot again. Um, areas on the west side likely to see 90 degree temperatures again, um, much like we did last week. Uh, areas on the east side, again, probably approaching 100 degrees, 105 degrees this weekend. Now, with no winds, we're not expecting a large outbreak of new fires. However, with the dry conditions, active fires will continue to, to burn. Um, as we work into next week, that's going to be my next concern for significant critical fire weather. Um, a low pressure that has been sitting off the coast for about 10 days now um, is forecast to make its way towards Washington. Um, in the Tuesday to Wednesday timeframe. Now, my main concern for that is thunderstorms and gusty winds. Uh, the gusty winds will precede the thunderstorms, which again, will probably create some critical fire weather, some red flag mornings again across uh, the east side of the state. As we work into Tuesday and Wednesday, the threat of thunderstorms will increase. Um, however, it does look like these thunderstorms will be provided with a pretty significant of moisture from the monsoon in the desert southwest. So the hopes right now are that the thunderstorms that do develop will produce precipitation across the east side of the state and in the high cascades. However, that is something that we're going to be monitoring uh, as we head into next week because the fuels are absolutely ready to burn if any lightning ignitions are uh, are possible outside of the, the rain shafts of those storms. So um, that's gonna be the weather problem for the next five to seven days, uh, watching for that next low pressure to come in on the coast um, and interact with our critically dry fuels across the entire state of Washington. Um, I will have availability to answer questions at the end, pending, uh, pending that, that's my, that concludes my brief. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan Roderick, PIO, for some safety information. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank you all, uh, those who have uh, made the trip out here to eastern Washington to come visit fires. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the hard work you're doing and uh, telling the story that we have on these fires. Uh, and I want to take a moment just to reiterate safety uh, when you do come out and visit these fires. Um, remember that Nomex, um, we had had that uh, briefing kind of early in, in the year going over kind of the point by point of what that safety looks like. Um, please remember to just before you leave the station, throw the boots in, throw the Nomex in, grab a hard hat. Um, the higher your level of safety gear that you can bring on a, on a fire with you, uh, the better chance there is that we can get uh, improved access for you, get you a little closer to the action. Uh, another thing I want to reiterate on safety is county roadblocks. Um, when the sheriff does come in and close those roads and puts up those roadblocks, um, it's really important that we're not crossing those. Um, you, you know, the fire could be a mile away from that roadblock. It could be 500 feet away from that roadblock. And I want to make sure that uh, you all as members of the press are not compromising your safety. Um, when we approach these roadblocks. Uh, my cell is going to be in the chat. Um, if you encounter a roadblock and you think there's a story that you, you need on the other side of it, give me a call and we'll try to accommodate that. But I just wanted to reiterate that we're using our, our best safety practices when we head out. And if you have any questions about what those are or if you have questions about where you might acquire some extra gear, uh, just give me a ring and, and we'll accommodate that. So um, with that, thank you very much. I'll be available for questions and uh, thank you all for coming out on fires with me uh, in the last 48 hours. It's, uh, it's definitely been uh, an active one. 
Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we're about to open it up for questions. I will just note that uh, please use the Encore PIO service if you have after hours questions, need acreage, uh, other stats like that. I'm the Encore PIO through Tuesday, then it'll be turned over to Janet Pierce. Our contact information will also be in the chat. Um, okay, it's time to go to Q&A. Uh, if you do have a question, please use the raise hand feature. I'll unmute you or send you a message to unmute and you can say your question or you can put your message into the chat. Uh, looks like we have a couple questions in the chat already that I'll, I'll quickly uh, read off here. Uh, this first one is for you, Russ. What agencies did the fire apparatus that was burned over belong to? It, uh, Thomas, I, I do know the one on Williams Lake uh, was Spokane Fire District 3, uh, which is Cheney area. I don't have uh, complete information on the one that burned at Lind. I just uh, heard that it was a Grant County engine, but I don't know which department. Copy that. Uh, another question from the chat. Um, this one might be for you, Commissioner. How many firefighting personnel are available to fight fires this year compared to other years pre-COVID? I understand that there is a significant lower number of firefighters due to COVID-related mandates. Could someone please explain this in more detail? Maybe that's a yeah. collaboration. Yeah, I think that'll be a collaboration with uh, Russ. I mean, I'll start first. Uh, we are currently fully staffed. Um, and we have gone and waived uh, for contractors the VAX mandate in order to mirror the federal government. Uh, we are very fortunate too, we've had a lighter fire season. So our firefighters have not been needing to fight fires from April to the present like they did last year. Russ, you may have more specifics. Um, and as you also heard from Russ's report, we're actually been sharing our resources across jurisdictions, helping um, in other states uh, fires. So yes, and it, uh, so this gets to be a complicated question. We look, you know, what well, first? What do we have in state? Uh, what do we have regionally with our partners, and and then what's available out there in the national system? And we do uh, move resources across the country. We're currently talking with New Mexico about bringing in some additional engines uh, to Washington DNR as well as a hand crew. So what we've seen locally, DNR is actually up slightly in numbers. So. Uh, with 1168, we're uh, bringing those resources online. So we actually have a handful uh, more just firefighters on the ground than we did compared to last year, which is uh, a really nice place to be as a fire manager. Uh, we have seen some slight numbers go down with the volunteer uh, firefighter force from the fire service. Um, but then across the country and the national system, really, we're sitting sitting pretty static. Uh, so there haven't been huge impacts uh, to that regional national system, which is really where we look to surge resources when we get into situations like this. And the one thing I'll add to it that I think important that came out of Russ's uh, earlier report is one of the things we've done because of initial attack, we've been able to get on fires very, very quickly. Like Russ said, we've had 293 fires but we have only had four significant ones on the landscape in the last few days. Largely that's because of our initial attack where we're getting on them quickly before they get too large, especially with the wind conditions. This helps us reduce the amount of resources we actually need on the ground as well, as well as the destruction that fires bring. All right, uh, we'll go to the next question, but before we do, just wanted to give a couple of numbers. Russ mentioned that we have a handful more DNR firefighters this year. We have 691 firefighters this year compared to 670 last year for an increase of 21 firefighters. Uh, Dan Griffin asks, in talking with the Southeast Washington Interagency Management Team, we were told Cow Canyon Fire is now 10% contained. Can you confirm? Russ? So uh, there is a little bit of lag time in number reporting. So I, if I reported 0% contained, uh, that was based on last night's uh, 209 incident status summary that they reported to the coordination center. Uh, so I would certainly believe 10% contained for Cow Canyon. Okay, we've got another question in the chat. Are there any other organizations participating in wildfire response? For example, I know Team Rubicon sometimes participates. Have any of those groups been activated yet? Um, 
Yeah, we're like I said, we're reaching out into the national system right now, and there are literally uh, hundreds of organizations that participate in that national system. So fire districts, uh, really the big wildland agencies that are uh, operated by states, and then the five federal wildland agencies. Uh, I heard specifically some talk about Team Rubicon yesterday, and it was reported to us that they're a lot less active in wildfire than they have been in the past. Uh, haven't haven't confirmed that. We have other assets we haven't reached into yet. Uh, our com our partners in the Northwest Compact, uh, so Canadian and uh, Canadian partners in the Northwest Compact. And then we haven't uh, felt like we tripped the fire danger trigger yet for one of our more important assets in Washington, which would be the National Guard. And uh, we're just not quite to that looking for a governor's proclamation of emergency yet, but just right here at home, we still have the National Guard as an asset to provide crews and aviation. Got another question for you, Commissioner. With 10 structures lost at Lind and a cabin plus our buildings lost at Vantage. How does this fire season so far compare to other seasons, especially at this point in the season? Yeah, I think so first let's get the perspective. I mean, to date we've had 293 fires. We are just in the first week of August. Last year in uh, April, we had 220 fires just for the month of April and that's early spring. It's our wet time usually. Um, and then, as we know, it rapidly uh, escalated throughout the following months to the point of having over 1,875 fires last year. So I'd say this year to date, we have had a really good um, low fire season. Uh, that moisture, those gray skies, those cooler temperatures have really helped on both sides of the Cascades. Um, but what we do know is that um, all that moisture allowed all of those grasses to grow and now uh, they will quickly dry out with the hot uh, temperatures, the temperatures we saw of over 90 degrees, the temperatures that are on the horizon. Um, and so right now we're sitting in a very good place given that our resources have not been stretched thin, our firefighters are not exhausted and drained like they were last year. Um, they're ready to get on these fires quickly and they're showing it. Um, but we do urge all of the people in Washington to be part of making sure that this year is our safest, most reduced fire season ever um, by not starting them in the beginning um, and being very safe out there um, on the landscape. Okay, we have a couple of minutes left for questions here. I'm not seeing any in the chat. Any additional questions before we close? Yes, we will make sure that the contact information gets posted. Uh, Ryan, you wanna go ahead and throw your, your digits in. Janet, go ahead. Um, I am not seeing any additional questions, so we'll get those contact info uh, requests taken care of, and then we will get out of here. I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, taking the time to be on this call today. I'd like to thank the commissioner. I'd thank to, like to thank Russ, and I'd like to thank Matthew for joining us. You'll have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Be safe.